Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video from The Sports Scoop. Today, we're going to be talking about Odell Beckham. We're getting into the offseason content. We're going to be talking about the Browns receiver and why he should be traded this offseason, be dealt to a different team. If you guys are new and you do enjoy NFL content, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and make sure to watch the full video to get my full analysis. Uh, I guess my hair is crazy. I'm getting a haircut soon. Don't worry about that. But subscribe. Let's get into the video. Before we talk about why he should be traded, let's talk about why he still has value and really what Odell Beckham would bring to another team if he were to be traded. When Odell's healthy, he's a very, very good receiver, explosive guy, very good in route running, good technical ability at the wide receiver spot, very good route runner. If you've, if you've watched some of his film or just watched him play, incredible route runner, a threat all around the field. He's a very good, as we've seen from this year, very good deep over the top receiver as well. He can hurt you downfield or in mid route plays. Odell obviously is a good receiver. And but at the end of the day, there still is a market for Odell Beckham. He's still a very explosive receiver, someone who can make a difference on and off the field, someone who can make a difference downfield and make those plays that are needed within a game. As the NFL becomes a weapons league, what I mean by that is, you know, you're stacking up a lot, a lot of weapons. Like we see in the Cowboys, they have three very good receivers in Gallup, Cooper, and CeeDee Lamb. And, and we've seen teams who are, who are trying to bring in as much talent as they can within their cap room. I think Odell could be that guy, whether he's your wide receiver one or is he's your complement receiver. Obviously, we saw, you know, it was mid-season or before the trade deadline this year. People were like, go to the Packers, be that guy behind Devontae Adams. Odell is adjustable throughout your offense and someone who brings explosive ability that still can make a difference on the field. And right now, he still has a lot of value. A lot of teams are looking for that target guy, as I said, or a complement receiver. And I think right now, value-wise, this will most likely be the last year Odell is, is solidified as a top receiver and can still bring in you know picks and players as we've seen not from Deshaun Watson but we've seen where it's he's a big player and will cause for a team to give you a haul of picks or players which I think is massive because of the Browns obviously there there's not as much holes but I think they can use picks with Odell not really being a key part to their team anymore. You know, why should Odell be traded? You know, it's, it's been going on for a while. People are like, yeah, Odell, the trade looked good and now it's starting to fall apart a bit. One main, main reason is injuries. And I hate to say it, you know, it, it sucks being injuries, but you're never gonna get a full season out of Odell Beckham. You're never gonna get, you know, every single game out of him. I'd say you're lucky if you're the Browns and you get 12 games. I believe in his last four seasons, he's only made, played 16 games once. So injuries have been very prevalent throughout his career. We saw the main reason was we saw the chemistry that the Browns had and, and just how much potential they uh, showed when Odell was not there. Obviously he got injured in week seven towards ACL. I believe it was able to a pick and he planted his knee wrong. Towards left ACL, obviously terrible out for the season. But then we saw this, you know, plethora of production from the Browns offense that we really hadn't seen that whole season definitely but really throughout this this new Browns team where they've gone you know this new Browns era where they've gone Stefanski they've gone Baker they've gone Jarvis Landry you bring in Chubb you bring in Hunt this new you know era of the team one thing we really saw was Jarvis Landry emerge as that wide receiver one that they really didn't have because it was Beckham and, and Landry and it was always like yeah Beckham's their wide receiver one but he wasn't having wide receiver one production and then we saw Landry emerge as that guy. We saw how explosive he is, how good his hands are. I mean, one of, some of the best hands in the league, whether it's one hand catches or just catching hard passes with in, in coverage. Another reason was Rashard Higgins, someone who was a sleeper in fantasy. I talked about uh, I was like week eight waiver wire, week 10 waiver wire ads. And, you know, he went off for 37 receptions for uh, 599 yards and four touchdowns. So he was that guy, someone who's a free agent this year. And a lot of people are like, yeah, we should resign, resign Richard. He's that role player and that wide receiver two that we can have, assuming Beckham's not there. And we move Landry to that wide receiver one spot. We saw after Odell was injured, Baker went and threw 20 touchdowns and only two interceptions, which is very high numbers. He was arguably a top 10 quarterback going into the playoffs. He looked incredible. He looked at that Baker we saw on Oklahoma, that Baker that deserved that first overall pick which is massive for the Browns is that's really what they've been needing out of Baker for the three years they've had him and he's coming up on a contract another big thing is Odell's incredibly expensive and injury prone which if you move on from him, you get more cap space and I don't think the Browns really have a ton of cap space so I think if they move on from Odell they get a ton of money to spend and allocate to other position needs that they that they you know desperately need like the defense and a problem with me which was what i saw early in the browns uh acquisition of of odell is they were forcing the ball to him unnecessarily it was like 
oh yeah, we have this wide receiver one, Oda Beckham, oh, let's get him the ball, you know, let's throw it to him every single time we have, we're worth passing every time we're passing and, and it, it negatively impacted three things. First of all, Baker's production. He was throwing more interceptions. His pass rating was dropping rapidly. And he was like, all right, oh, I mean, Baker's not looking good. He's throwing poorly, but I think he has to be attributed partly to how they were forcing the ball down Odell Beckham's side every single play. It affected Odell's production, which you'd be like, yeah, but he's getting the ball all the time. Someone like Terry McLaurin is that only really good receiver in Washington. He has incredible years, but for Odell, it's just he couldn't really handle it. He wasn't producing as much either. Jarvis Landry was started to fall off because he wasn't getting the ball. Rashard Higgins was, you know, the, it just affected that whole defense when you're not spreading out the ball. And we've seen on offenses that work and offenses that are flu would like the Chiefs, they spread the ball out. Obviously, Tyreek Hill's your number one guy, but you can throw it to Watkins. He throws it to Hardman. You have now of CEH. And it's it's just you have to spread the ball out, which is something the Browns didn't do, uh, you know, when Odell's on the field. And as well, I mean, Odell's always had problems on and off the field, conflicts with teammates, with coaches, just getting pissed off when he makes a bad play. We saw it with the Giants, obviously, that uh, famous field goal, apol- you know, hit and then apology. I think the main reason that o- why Odell should be traded is if you look in the grand scheme of things, he negatively impacts his team more than he positively impacts. You know, when he got to teams like, oh my God, you know, the LSU brothers go together. They're going to be incredible. This team is, is going to be playoff contenders within years. You have Baker, that young quarterback. You have Chubb, who's looking amazing. You bring in Hunt. You have a great offensive line. The defense is starting to arise with those picks and Denzel Ward and, and Del Pitt and Greedy Williams. You got, you know, decent linebackers. But Odell, at the end of the day, just doesn't do it for, for the amount of of, of chances and targets they give him for the production he has and, and the negative impact it has on Baker and this offense as in total. I forgot to say the third reason why Odell negatively impacts, but the offense in total, Odell just isn't good for it, which is unfortunate. Obviously, I'm a Giants fan, so it hurts to say that as he was so good and so promising out of college in the first couple years he had with the Giants, one of the best rookie receivers we've ever seen, uh, you know, since obviously Justin Jefferson and others. So I think overall, Yes, Odell will be moved. I, I think he'll be dealt to a team. Hopefully, I think it'll be better for the Browns offense, and I think they can get a, a ton of picks or players which can be moved, and, and obviously they can get money to move otherwise. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video. Love doing these you know, analysis videos. So if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to comment down below. Where do you guys think Odell will go? Do you think he should be traded? What are your problems with Odell? If you're a Browns fan, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, we'd love to see if we reach the fans of the teams that we uh, target in our videos. We will have a Marcus Mariota one coming that may have already come out. I'm not completely sure. I don't think it will have, but that will be coming out. We as well, I tell you guys every single video as the offseason comes, we are starting a series offseason moves. We're analyzing each team and what they should do in the offseason, the draft, free agency, re-signings, cuts, all that stuff, trades. So make sure to stay tuned for that. We already have a Bengals and a Giants one we are bringing out, trying to come out with as many as we can. We'll try to do every single NFL team. And then after that, we do uh, the Buster Boom series where after each team has made their acquisitions for the season, we talk about how they will fare in the 2021 season. So if you guys are enjoy NFL content, subscribe. We're a smaller channel. We interact with all of our fans. So if you want a channel, you can always go to make sure to subscribe, comment down below, or we'll respond, follow our socials there, link down below our Instagram, our podcast, our website, our second channel. Sorry, make sure to subscribe to our second channel. We post clips of our videos. Yeah, we'll see you next time.